The fastest growing consumer electronics product in history is the DVD player. According to Connor's Instat Research Group, they will overtake VCR sales in three more years. With that in mind, our one to watch this week is an internet pure play taking advantage of this phenomenal technology adoption curve. Not by selling the products, but with a simple subscription service. This is the CEO of a thriving internet pure play, Netflix. Instead of the premature gray hairs you'd expect on this man's head and this economic climate, he's going for a different look. We're so there. Okay. So first off, what's with the hair? <laughs> well, I had uh, committed to the company a year ago that uh, if we could get profitable, that uh, I would dye my hair. And we had our first month of uh, cash profitable uh, last month. And so this was the uh, ritual humiliation. It's a bet he's happy to lose at the monthly company meeting. Taking place where else? But a local movie theater. It'll wash out and we'll go back down to cash negative. Um. <laughs> Netflix runs a DVD subscription service for a monthly fee. A simple business to consumer idea one might have found at the start of the internet bubble, not at the end. But there are more than 300,000 consumers, like Adam Actor, who are helping make it work. This has worked great for me because I'm a movie buff and like the fact that I didn't have to go out to the video store when I can see movies I want to see and it's, it's really, I mean, price-wise it's cheap, $20 a month isn't bad at all. Adam doesn't have to leave the comfort of his couch when he gets home because a new DVD shows up in his mailbox as soon as he sends back one he's already seen. Unlike Internet Pure Play's web van and Cosmo that failed to deliver, Netflix is banking on a different structure. The post office has 800,000 employees delivering to 100 million homes six days a week, and all of them are now virtual Netflix employees. So it's a very efficient distribution method. Another efficiency is this distribution center. The employees here accept, check for scratches, repackage, and remail more than 80,000 DVDs a day. That's in and out. With all users keeping priority rentals and online accounts, it creates a net enabled inventory tracking dream. About 80% uh, of the time when a movie is returned, um, we know exactly who we want to send it out to. We don't have to restock it on the shelves. We can send it right back out to someone. But that doesn't mean behemoths like Blockbuster aren't screening the idea. They've got their own DVD service. 30 DVDs, 30 days, 20 bucks. A service that didn't sit well with consumer Adam Actor. That was good, but it was, I felt rushed. I felt like, you know, I had to watch all these DVDs every night and it, it expired after a month and you had to get them back the next day and rent the next one. And that was, that was tough. The specifics might need tweaking, but the idea may have found its time. If it turns out a $10 or $20 a month subscription relationship is more attractive relationship for consumer to enter into than a $4.95 video rental relationship or a $19.95 purchase relationship, um, then a lot of the economics of the, the home rental, home sale window in the movie industry have to be rethought. Right now, the challenges facing Netflix are gaining that critical mass of consumers and retaining them. That will allow the company cash flow positive status month after month. And what happens to the CEO's hair at that point is anyone's guess. Now, based on some previous reports from you, Hari, you would think that this is an interim step until video on demand comes into the home. That's right. You know, that's exactly what this company is positioning themselves as. They want to build relationships with the studios and with consumers so that, you know, consumers whose tastes and preferences they'll have had access to for quite some time. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah but, but while they're waiting for that to happen, what's going to happen to this company in the meantime? Are they going to go public or make a little more money? Well, they're hoping to be cash flow positive by mid next year and they want to go public, but I don't know. I, I think that actually they're a great acquisition candidate for a company like AOL Time Warner, who's got a huge video archive, or how about Viacom, who actually owns Blockbuster? If they don't feel like mm -hmm. they want to build it themselves, and you've got a nice little subscription service that's bringing in money at some point. Perfect. Cool. Yeah. All right. Hari Sweeney Boston, thanks once again.